morning. I'm Mayor Tommy Roberts. Welcome back to the Mayor's Table. Once again this morning, my guest is City Manager Rob Mays. Rob, um, occasionally we like to brief our citizens on what's happening at uh, our airport here in Farmington. And um, I think our citizens appreciate that fact. They um, appreciate being updated occasionally on what's going on there. And we actually do have some, some news that we uh, want to communicate. We think this is news that may be out in the community already. Mm -hmm. But um, recently we were notified by the management at Great Lakes Avi Aviation that they intend to uh, terminate service at our airport effective November 1st. And so we've been very active in, in uh, responding to that uh, message and uh, active in in communications with Great Lakes management and discussions with them about uh, what may be done to perpetuate service here. Why don't you set the stage for our viewers here this morning about those conversations? Well, as you said, we, we have been very proactive. It goes back you know, more than a decade of proactive work trying to uh, recruit uh, better and, and uh, more air service to our, to our airport. Lots of work has gone into that. We've had one carrier now for quite some time, Great Lakes Aviation. Uh, things were going uh, pretty well at our airport prior to 2013. We had about 16,000 employments a year, which was, was good for us. Uh, then we were, we were dealt uh, a blow by the FAA uh, regarding the change in requirements for first officers that really changed the airline industry, particularly the regional, small regional airlines, and we've really been struggling ever since then. So kind of just to review that, in 2013, the FAA uh, increased by over six times the required hours for a first officer. From 250 to 1,500. That's right, yeah. yeah. And um, as a result, there was an immediate pilot shortage, and the smaller airlines felt it the worst and the smaller airports began to fill it the quickest. We were very involved working with our airline. We actually, you and I actually went to Washington, D.C. to lobby for, um, for in uh, March of 2014, um, our airline uh, filed a, a exemption request, a petition for, re for an exemption to allow uh, their 19-seater airplanes to continue. Uh, that did not pass, and so as a result, they ended up having to take 10 seats out of their plane. So they've been flying 19 seat airplanes with only nine seats now for several years. And we've recognized that we've been really holding on for a thread because of that. There's no way they can continue to fly economically. Since 2013, um, with that change, we dropped to four, just over 1,400 employments. And so things have not been economically going well in spite of the fact that the, the service has improved in terms of reliability up there. We've been expecting for some time to get this uh, this news. I think we have been hanging on by a thread for many years. Uh, in fact, Great Lakes Aviation has terminated service to uh, oh, over 20, probably close to 25 communities in the last four to five years. And uh, we have held on. We've had a historically good relationship with Great Lakes Aviation. Uh, there have been times when we urged management at Great Lakes Aviation uh, to focus on reliability and uh, we've had concerns that, uh, that that we have passed on from our community about reliability issues because our our citizens here in Farmington do have options. They can use Durango, uh, they can use Albuquerque, or they could use Farmington. And uh, we feel and have felt that it's important for us to, to have a functioning airport in order to support economic development activities here in our community. But uh, this, is, uh, this is a notification that doesn't come as a complete surprise to us. It's one that we hope we could avoid. What are we, what are we doing at, at our staff level, at your level, senior management level, uh, in reaction to this notification? And I'm obviously familiar with what's going on in the context of those conversations, but why don't you relate the uh, essence of what's being discussed okay. today? Well, let me step back and set a little context. There's essentially two kinds of airline service out there, subsidized and non-subsidized, whether that subsidy is coming from the federal government or local communities. The city of Farmington has never had subsidized air service. So all the air service that we've had throughout the years 
has carried itself on a on an economic basis. We've never had to subsidize airfares by, with taxpayer money. So that's the first thing to understand. And as this shift in the airline industry has taken place, uh, more and more airlines are requiring subsidies. And that's exactly what Great Lakes is doing. They're pulling out of the, of the non-subsidized markets like ours to go into what are called EAS, um, essential air service, which are federally federal subsidies and guaranteed revenues and other cities. We don't qualify or historically have not qualified to be a federally subsidized market because as you've mentioned, the fact is we have good air service options here between Durango and, and Albuquerque. So you fast forward to the next challenge kind of as this has evolved over time, the Farmington Airport through other changes the FAA made a number of years ago um, by adding um, safety margins to the runway length uh, we no longer were able to fly larger airplanes, even regional jets in here. So we, we were unable to bring in airlines that flew larger airplanes. Durango then emerged as kind of the regional air, air hub because of their long, longer runway. Then you fast forward to the 2013 decision with the, the changes in pilot requirements, the, the shortage of pilots proliferated throughout the, the industry, thereby even putting more pressure on that the airlines have to move from small planes to bigger planes because two pilots can fly a big plane the same as they can fly a small one. So that's really put us in a, in a difficult challenge. And so uh, Gray Lakes has essentially announced they're moving out of all of their non-subsidized moving into to federally subsidized markets where they can make money with these small planes still. So historically we have we have done a lot to try to recruit and contact other airlines. I, I hear people say, why don't they get another airline? We want people to understand that we don't choose what airlines fly in and out of Farmington. Any airline is allowed to fly, and any airline is welcome here to fly. There's only a couple airlines, though, that, that fly aircraft that can function in our high altitude and in our short runway, making it very difficult. So you ask, what have we been doing? Well, again, all along we've stayed in contact. You and I have, have met, we went to DC to, to uh, lobby on behalf of our airline. We've visited them, but we've had three conference calls since this announcement. Um, we're working with, with management of Great Lakes. They're looking at options possibly to extend service. But I think we have to recognize that it may be very, very difficult to extend that in the long run. So we've also hired a, a consultant that specializes in, in helping to recruit uh, airlines into small communities. Uh, this consultant will help us, number one, to apply for a grant. There are federal grants that will help fund um, the recruitment in, of a new airline into an area. There are several airline possibilities that, that could come here and fly that have expressed an interest, and there's some even potential of Great Lakes extending. Um, one of the, again, the primary issue is, is pilot issues. And so we're even looking at things as creative as whether we could recruit pilots that have lived here. We have a long aviation history and pilot training history, and there are pilots that live in this area. Um, Gray Lakes is even open to the possibility that we could help identify a crew of pilots and they would create a, a mini uh, domicile here to, um, to have pilots come. So if we could find pilots, they're willing to fly here. It really is a pilot issue. And so the bottom line is that uh, we here at the city of Farmington are very much interested in seeing commercial air service perpetuated in our community, whether it be Great Lakes Aviation continuing to provide that service or a new provider. Uh, there are going to be many, many discussions uh, uh, that take place between now and, and November 1st and then beyond as well. If we were successful in getting Great Lakes Aviation to extend their service beyond November 1st for a period of time, it would enable us to do several things. We could um, extend the uh, TSA presence in our community uh, during that time. If we lose TSA, uh, then it's a process to get them reassigned to a, an airport uh, if, in the event that we lost service and then were able to find new service. So that's something we'd like to avoid if possible. So there are some options that we're looking at. Uh, we recognize the value of um, providing to our flying public a choice. 
Great Lakes uh, providing service out of Farmington to the Denver metro area has been something that many of our citizens have taken advantage of over time. Um, Great Lakes has competed uh, on a price basis pretty well during that time. There are many times when you can find really good prices with uh, Great Lakes aviation, great fares uh, when compared to those that can be found out of, uh, out of Durango. Uh, other times Durango has better mm -hmm. fares. It's just a matter of shopping mm -hmm. those prices. But we realize the value of a commercial air service airport to a community, and specifically to our community. I think one of the things that we need to continue to emphasize is that we have a strong general aviation community uh, here in, in the Farmington area. And uh, we have a number of uh, private uh, pilots and flyers, military type flights, uh, a number of different ways that uh, airports can be active. We derive revenue from uh, fuel flowage charges and, uh, and landing fees. And so we, again, we know the benefit, we know the value of, a, of an airport to our community. What do you think's going to be happening in the next two to three weeks? Well, we are continuing conversations first with, with Great Lakes, and we brought on, again, a consultant to, to work with us on options to extend them, whether it's for a short period of time while we work on the potential of a, of a new airline or whether it's more in, indefinite. Um, a, a big factor for Great Lakes will be if, if there's some movement with the FAA. Uh, with the new administration, there's been some indication that that the FAA is, is re-looking at this. This pilot shortage has moved far beyond affecting just airports the size of Farmington. It is now affecting many, many airlines and this, and this shortage is becoming a, really a crisis in the industry. And so finally the federal government is starting to pay a little bit more attention to it. So if, they have, if, the, if Gray Lakes could get some, some movement on allowing them to put those 10 seats back in the airplanes, that could make a, a big difference on the, whether they could fly economically. Um, and so we're con we'll continue those conversations. So we're gonna work on again getting this grant, which will, would be a, a good tool for helping us to recruit possible, even pretty creative options with Gray Lakes, if not trying to get another airline in here. And there are a couple airlines that we've already had some initial uh, contact with that are, that are promising. But again, as you pointed out, it's very important for our listeners to understand that whether or not we have um, airline service or not, we still have a viable airport that's important to this community in many ways, from medical flights to shipping to commercial um, flights or commercial um, business flights that come in. Um, and a lot of things going up there that are very important. Well, uh, again, in summary, the decision to provide air service to a community is all about the financial aspects uh, of that operation, the economics of that operation. And up until now, Great Lakes has seen Farmington as a positive in, in that context. I've often wondered how, but nevertheless, Great Lakes has continued to provide service here uh, at a time when it was discontinuing service to many, many, many communities. And at this point in time, they're looking at other options uh, where the economics might, might be better. And that is where those federal subsidies are provided to the essential air service yep. designated communities. Be nice if Farmington could be designated that way, but it's not going to happen because as you mentioned, there are options for air service uh, that are pretty close to Farmington. Yep. So I think that probably con concludes uh, our discussion this morning. Is there anything you'd like to add before we close? No, just again, that we'd want our, our viewers to know that we have been very proactive on this, very involved, and outside of, of, of subsidizing airline service with taxpayer dollars, uh, again, we don't control who comes and flies here any more than we do other private sector businesses that come. And so... If there was a market here, there would be an airline here, again, with the constraints of our, of our runway and, and altitude. Rob, thanks for being my guest this morning on the Mayor's Table, and uh, we appreciate all of you viewing this segment of the Mayor's Table. We hope you learned something, and we'll look forward to seeing you again next Monday.